Baseball News Club here. We're going to go over the MLB NLDS. And if you could please subscribe, follow us. Appreciate it. If you're on Instagram, please follow. Now, here is the predictions. The link will be above. This is a video I did yesterday, Sunday. This video is going to be a lot shorter because I just didn't get as many uh, views on YouTube or Instagram. It was too long of a video, so I will be cutting this video down. So, again, link will be above for the Yankees A's breakdown, but let's go ahead and break down the National League Division Series right now. First series we're going to break down is the Marlins versus the Braves, or aka Bottom Feeders. If you haven't heard that story, a news reporter called the Marlins Bottom Feeders, so they're using that as their motivation. They have shirts in the dugout, so very interesting. Now, on the season series, Atlanta owns the season series 6-4. It's going to be interesting because this is five games in five days, so... Big question mark, is the pitching for the Marlins going to be able to go up against the offensive juggernaut of the Braves? Um, now, here's something to keep in mind. Atlanta beat the best, if not one of the best pitching staffs in baseball versus Cincinnati. They didn't beat them by much, but they beat them. They went up against Trevor Bauer and the likes of the rest of the organization. They beat them. So that's something to think about because the Marlins are no way, shape, or form a good pitching staff or as good as Cincinnati Reds. So something to think about. And the Braves got Max Freed, Ian Anderson, Kyle Wright. And what's interesting is the top two ERAs in the playoffs right now is the Braves and the Marlins. So I'm looking at it like this. Uh, Brian Snicker of uh, the Braves, uh, the coach for the Braves versus Donnie Baseball. It's going to be very interesting because Brian has been with the Braves. I think he's been coaching the last four years, and he's lost the NLDS the last two years in a row. I don't know if that means anything, but it's interesting. Now, pitching on the season, Atlanta was ranked 15th. Miami is ranked 21st, so it's kind of a wash there. And then Atlanta, their batting average was second, and we all know about how many runs they can score. And then Miami was 17th. So you're looking at a team in Atlanta that has better pitching, better hitting, and they've got the season series versus a team in Miami that has a question mark in pitching, uh, but they seem to pull it off. I mean, they beat the Cubs. That's pretty impressive. So how far can Miami go? Is Miami good enough to beat a team like Atlanta? Is this the end of the road for Miami? Now, the keys to the series for me is the fish. They need to contain Atlanta's hitting. Listen, the Cubs are a good team, but they're nowhere close to Atlanta Braves. Atlanta Braves are a team like the Padres, Dodgers, they have power, they have hitting, they're just a offensive juggernaut. So that's a big key for the Fish. And can their pitching make it five games? This is not a three-game series. Can they? Can Donnie move the rotation round to last against Atlanta? And then for Atlanta, they need to stay hungry. They've been solid all year, but you know, don't go relaxing on the bottom feeders. Don't go thinking that you can just run over the Marlins. So stay hungry, stay sharp, and then don't get out coached by Don Madeline. Don Manley is a smart coach. He knows his matchups. He's got a team that doesn't have a lot of all-stars, and he's winning. So you have to be very careful. So in this series, I'm actually picking Atlanta. Uh, don't be surprised if the Marlins give him a run for it, but I'm going to pick Atlanta to move on to the NLCS. All right, let's move on to the other series in the NLDS, and this is one of the most anticipated matchups, the San Diego Padres versus Los Angeles Dodgers. This one's going to be exciting. These are two very good clubs, very similar, and if anything, I think of all the teams in Major League Baseball that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Dodgers, it's the Padres, at least on paper. Um, Dodgers won the season series 6-4, but keep in mind, the Padres didn't have Clevenger, and they made a lot of moves mid-season, so they didn't have the same pitching staff. So imagine if they had that Clevenger and the same pitching staff they have now at the beginning of the season. It could totally be a different season series a matchup record. So very interesting there. Now hitting-wise, OPS, Dodgers are ranked second in Major League Baseball. Padres are ranked fourth. Hitting average-wise, Dodgers were ranked 11th. The Padres were a little bit better, ranked 10th. And then pitching, the Dodgers are ranked number one ERA-wise in Major League Baseball. Padres were ranked eighth. So very interesting there. Now another thing to factor in is uh, Globe Life Park in Arlington. This is a long fly ball stadium. This is not a home run friendly stadium per se so Dodgers who dominated home put up a ton of offense and home runs at home are going to be on the road in Arlington so I wonder if that's going to factor into this five game series both teams have the pitching to go through the five game series Padres proved that uh, winning St. Louis using I think nine pitchers so they have the depth 
And if anything, the Padres had, uh, through the month of September, I think they had the best uh, bullpen war. So very tough team. Uh, Walker Bueller, his blister, is that going to come into effect? Kenley Jansen, is he going to be a wild card? And then also look at this guy, uh, Clayton Kershaw. Now, I know he had a good game against Milwaukee, but let's look at the last couple years of him in the playoffs, 18 and 19. He just got raked over the coals um, against Boston, Milwaukee, and Washington. So which Clayton Kershaw is going to show up? Are we going to get the regular season Kershaw or the last couple seasons playoff Kershaw? Now, one of our followers on Instagram, Chris Manson, brought up a fabulous point. Rematch Astros-Dodgers. That's very interesting. That is probably the best thing for Major League Baseball to have those two face off again in the World Series, but we'll have to wait and see. I hope the Astros don't make it because I'm not a fan of cheating, but let's move on to the keys to the series. Now, without a doubt for the Padres, it's going to come down to these two guys, Clevenger and Lamette. Absolutely fabulous pitchers. We all know about Clevenger. Lamette's had a fabulous season for the Padres this year, but as of this post, Monday, October 5th at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, They're added to the division series roster, which is absolutely positive because they were not in the wild card roster. But the big question is, are they ready? Are they 100%? The Padres, in order to beat the Dodgers, absolutely need these two guys to show up, be 100%, and win for them. In a five-game series, that's going to be the difference for the Padres. And then for the Dodgers, Clayton Kershaw. Is he going to be the great Clayton Kershaw, or are we going to see the guy from the last couple years from the playoffs? I mean, it's He's been hit in like the all-star game and playoffs. So we'll have to see. And then the bullpen with Kenley Jansen. There's a little bit of a question mark for the Dodgers lately, but I think overall the Dodgers are going to squeak by. I see this going a five game series and you know, with the question mark with Clevenger and Lamette, I'm going to have to pick the Dodgers over the Padres, which is tough because honestly I try to be neutral with all of my selections. I am born and raised a Padre fan, but you know, the question mark with Clevenger and Lamette has me worried, and I think the Dodgers are going to squeak by after five games. So here's our series picks. Thank you very much for watching Baseball News Club. Feel free to comment, and please follow us on Instagram and Twitter.